Well, we're at the five after point, so I said, go yeah, ahead. You guys want to get started or mm -hmm. whatnot? Yep. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I'm sure more people will probably be joining us as we move along, but Tiffany, Trayvon, welcome, welcome both of you, and thank you for joining us this morning uh, for our session here on becoming a homeowner in six months. It's greatly appreciated to see both of you here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull something up here for you. Now, before we get started with it, just so you both know, I um, have a couple housekeeping things here. We're gonna have a number of different sessions or conversations throughout this uh, hour. But while that's going on though, only thing we ask is while the speaker is speaking, if you just remain muted during that time frame. But if you have any questions anytime throughout, please feel free at any moment to unmute yourself and ask a question. You can also use the chat feature, depending if you're on your cell phone or if you're on a laptop, if you have it available to you, definitely write your message there and we'll be able to read it. And we can also ask the question for you. Um, also, you know, you have your reaction buttons. So if you wanted to just stop, raise your hand, anything of that nature, so we can also see you, please feel free to do that as well. Now, what we're gonna talk about today, we have some great speakers for you today. You see them all there. And they're going to want to introduce them all to you so you'll know exactly who they are, what their amazing background is, and then we're going to go into the topics they're also going to speak about. We're going to talk about the role of the realtor today, also understanding your credit, and also some of the home buyer assistance programs. So we're going to give you a good set of information, hopefully and give you a good foundation on what you need to do moving forward. So I want to start out with the introduction of our, oh, before we do that, though. We're gonna have another session coming up, November 2nd, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m., same time. So please, if you like the information that's being provided today, we'll be expanding on it on the 20th. So please feel free to register, come back and join us. If you know anyone else who's in the market right now or thinking about buying a home, please share the information with them as they can come in and also gain this knowledge that we're gonna provide. So as we get started, our speakers for today, our first speaker, well, one of our speakers, excuse me, Brenda Kasuva. Brenda is a real estate educator, mentor, team leader. Brenda teaches real estate courses throughout the state of Maryland. She's growing so much, she's even leaving us. Didn't you just come back from Georgia at one point? <laughs> she's all over the place. Brenda is a fixture in the industry from new agents to seasoned vets. Brenda is just a, a plethora of knowledge. We also have with us Patricia Ruiz. Patricia is our home buying prep specialist. Patricia, <laughs> she likes to empower all of our home buyers through education. Um, she likes to create strategies that help and assist them through the whole home buying process. Patricia brings years of experience to the table. Um, being Maryland, also has a lot of knowledge from out of state as well. So Patricia, thank you so much. As some of you might have heard, she's also licensed in DC as well. So. And then we also have Blanca Solis. Blanca, highly educated, well-trained realtor in the area, has a great understanding of the home buying process, and she can help you with every step that's necessary to help you succeed and win that offer to get the home that you're looking for. So what we're gonna do now is we're actually gonna roll in. Oh, and before I start that, let me just say, my name is Steve Donegan. I'm gonna be a host and MC today. I'm also an agent with EXP Realty and I'm going to try to provide the best information I can to help us move along and try to keep you all engaged so we can make this the best day possible. So our first topic we're going to start with is going to be with Blanca. Blanca Solis, she's going to talk to us about the role of the realtor. Okay, before she does that, let's just make sure if somebody, um, so if you can tell us on the chat, I know it's just the two of you, but we just wanted to make sure <laughs> that, you know, if anyone speaks Spanish, then Blanca is also fluent in that language. So I think you should be seeing the poll. So Tiffany and Trayvon, just let us know, yes, no. Okay. Thank you. So Blanca, you are good to go. We don't have anyone that needs translation okay. for today. Thank you. Okay. 
Excellent, excellent. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm very happy to be here with you. So happy that see you're taking your first steps to become a homeowner. So uh, we've all been in that process and that time that we want to, um, sorry, excuse me for a second, that we want to um, become homeowners, but we don't know where to start or who to go to. So first things first, I will definitely suggest you to uh, get a real estate professional, uh, get in touch with them, choose and select the one that you feel connected with and you feel uh, secure. Once you do that, you set up an appointment or the agent will set up an appointment with you. You guys uh, will meet and in that first appointment, the agent will bring in a document that it, it will say who represent who. That is not a contract, it's just a notice to letting you know who will be representing you. Also meaning you know working with another agent. So, so once this is done and you're in your meeting, you will get this sign, you will go through it with the agent and then you will have a conversation. If you as a buyer and the agent decide to work together because you will be a team, then the agent will present another document to you which will be in agreement. Once you sign the agreement, that means the brokerage of the agent will be represented you and for same thing, the agent will be represented. So congratulations, you've been represented by the brokerage, which in this case will be EXP and the agent of you, or you have selected your preference. Once you do this, you will have a nice conversation with, him, with the agent. Uh, you will get uh, to know him and the agent will get to know you. Once this is done, the agent will ask you if you have been pre-approved. If the answer is yes, then the agent will uh, request your pre-approval letter and your lender information. You can provide that in that appointment, but if your answer is no, I have not been pre-approval, this is the information that I have, then the agent will refer some lenders to you. You will select the lender that you uh, will feel more comfortable or if it's more of the criteria that you're looking for. And then um, the process will begin. So you will work with the lender and with the agent. And the agent, what it will do is represent you and look for the best of interest of you. Once the lender go through the process with you and uh, you get pre-approval, the lender will get in touch with you and the lender, excuse me, and the lender will, um, once you're, I'm um, sorry about that, once you are pre-approval, the lender will get a letter saying that you're being pre-approval and the amount of the loan. You will also get in touch with the agent, letting you know that you have been pre-approval. Once it's done, then, the agent will provide the listing of the properties which match the criteria that you're looking for, locations, characteristics, and everything that you're interested in. Next step will be uh, the most exciting for everyone, which is no, the shopping. It will take you to see the properties. It will uh, meet you there. You will be with the agent. Uh, once you find the one, that you have uh, think about that will fit the location, the bedrooms, everything that you're looking for in the property, then the agent will get in touch with the um, seller agent or listing agent. It will get in touch with them. It will send an um, a, um, offer. And once the seller accepts the offer, then you will get under the contract. So this process, the agent will be working with you and be in touch with you and we have a great communication with you guiding you through the process it seems like a lot but the agent will handle this for you so you trust your agent you will get you back so nothing to worry about nothing to stress about the agent will be there for you when you vote on their contract then um at the same time that you get in the contract then becomes another step, which is to get a title company. If you know a title company or you're looking yeah. for another title company or you don't know about it, the agent have so many resources 
that it will like, refer you to some title companies. Once you select the title company that you will be happy to work with, you will bring the um, down payment. It, may, it will be a check or it could be electronic send, but that won't be held by the uh, agent or the broker agent. That will be held by the title company. So that down payment will be held title company. The title will be working also to find some information about the property, making sure everything's uh, going well and everything's as it has been told based on title and other uh, matters about the property. Once the agent is working also with that, you will need a home inspection to be done in the property. The agent also can refer some uh, home inspectors to you. Once we select who you wanna work with, the appointment will be set the agent will go with you to the appointment. It will be there to assist you in case you have any questions. It will be there to help you to understand what the um, inspector is talking about. And once that is done, in case that there's any inspections that need to be done, then the agent will uh, communicate with the seller agent and will request the repairs that need to be done if they're sent. Once the agent negotiates with the um, seller agent, uh, you also will have something on coming up, which is the appraisal. The seller will send an appraisal to make sure the value of the property match the uh, selling price and also the offer that you will be sending up. Once, uh, let's say the uh, inspections are done and also the approval, you will also have to get some homeowner warranty and some homeowner insurance as well. So basically, uh, we as an agents, we will handle everything for you. We will explain any question that you have. We will walk you through all the process. And then uh, if everything goes smooth, then we'll take you to the settlement table. And then congratulations, you have become a homeowner. There's some things that I uh, left out in order to don't know, like confuse you. For instance, when you sign your agreement, that doesn't mean like you have to wait until the agreement say in order to uh, stop working with the agent. There's some cases that maybe down the road, something won't go well and you think like, oh, I think at this point I might have to switch or the agent might say, well, maybe something's going on, the client is not understanding, or probably something happened. If one of the parts decides to stop the agreement, it can be done. It doesn't mean you have to wait until the end of the process. So that's something that you have to keep in mind. If something goes wrong, you don't have to stay there until the end. But definitely, it's, that's, it doesn't happen very often. That's, it's not common. Also, um, I would like to mention why it's so important to get an agent. The agent will walk you through all the process, as I mentioned. All the process. It will be there. It will answer your questions. It will make sure everything's going smoothly. But also, in most of the cases, the agent won't charge any amount to you. Most of the cases, the seller will pay the buyer's agent fee. So put it this way, is the most, if not the most important, one of the biggest or most important decision for your life. And the agent who's working you through the process is really not costing you any money. Because most of the time, as I mentioned, the seller is the one who pays the buyer agent, unless it's stated otherwise. But if that is the case, the agent will let you know once you start working with it. This is what it says, this is what is stated here, uh, you will pay or you will not. So I, I will definitely, definitely, definitely recommend if you're about to go to start the process, Get in touch with your realtors, talk to them, meet them, decide which one works for you, based on personality or any connection you might feel with, 
and then please go for it. Don't wait. I have experience. I've been a buyer myself. I've been told for somebody like, oh, you can, you have to wait this long in order to, to become a homeowner. And guess what? I met with another person, another agent, and six months, in six months, I have my first property. So I'm telling you, if you had a bad experience with somebody, that doesn't mean we all the same. Just keep going, keep searching, you'll find the right person and you'll find the right agent who will take you to be a new homeowner. Once you have one property and you work well with your agent and you, will, you want to invest, the agent will can also help you with that. So just keep in mind, it's not like, oh, I work with an agent once and that's it. No, you can work with your agent, you can refer your agent, you can call your agent, you have a question. You can even mail with it like, oh, now I have my property and I'm thinking about to spend investing. What do you, what did you advise? What did you recommend me to do? We've been working on this, we're in here every day. We have really extensive resources that you can take advantage of. And as I say, why not take advantage of this? It will not charge in any money and we will get paid until the end of the transaction. And most of the times, as I mentioned, it is not paid by the buyer, by the sellers. Um, is what it, what it, how it is to be done. So let me know if you have any questions. Um, I'm, I'll be more happy to answer those. And uh, if anybody has something else to add. Anybody? <laughs> So Brenda, I guess you're saying really at this point is representation and just supporting the the buyer is really one of the main things that having an agent will do. It will be able to help them kind of guide them throughout each step of the process and just take them from start to finish and someone who's just be there of support. Is that one of the main things you feel like is what's important with working with an agent? Absolutely. Absolutely. As I say, we have so many resources. We have like expensive networks as well. We know, for instance, Brenda, who's been in the business for so many years, and we know many lenders, home inspectors, insurance companies. We know pretty much everybody in the business. So anything, title companies, we work with everybody. And this kind of business, like we work, like we collaborate. It's that's very important. So any question that you have, definitely you really will be there to guide you. We had we are very, very extensive networks. So we have extensive resources as well to look for the properties that you're looking for, match your criteria. We have access to listings. So definitely we have great resources. Like if you have any questions and you really want to start the process, we're ready to help you. We are ready to help you. We're always ready. Once you get in touch with us, we'll start the process with you. All right. Yes. All right. Thank, Thank you so you. much. I'm gonna Tiffany Trayvon, if you have any questions for, for Blanca. Why are you putting on me dead? No. Okay. All right. Well, Blanca, thank you so much for that. You know, I think representation is extremely important and just knowing what all the things an agent can do to support you, I think that's just tremendous and, and it's good for buyers to understand that, that we're here to support them and help them throughout the process and get them to where they need to be and go through all the contract and all the pieces. So thank you so much, Blanca. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you for your attention. And as I say, don't forget, get in touch with your realtor. And with that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to move over to Patricia Ruiz, who is going to talk to us about the importance and the role of credit in home buying and how it affects the home buying power. Patricia, please. Okay, so I'm off mute now. I just did see in the chat that Tiffany um, added that she doesn't have any questions. Um, so I'm going to jump into credit, um, which basically everybody knows you need credit, not only in um, home buying, but just in life in general, the way our society is structured. Um, and so I think of credit and home buying are as bedfellows. Um, you can't have a home without 
um, attacking the issue of credit. Um, there's only one time where you don't need credit in home buying and I'll go over that. Um, so I like to look at credit as like a game. And um, so it's a game that uh, you kind of have to, you have to play the way that our society is, is structured. So it's a game, but it has real life um, benefits as well as real life consequences when we don't play the game of credit. Um, and so basically, you know, benefits of playing the game of credit is you, you know, you can buy a house, you can buy a car, you know, you can get a credit card. Um, but if you've ever applied for credit and was told you didn't have sufficient credit, you probably ask yourself, how am I supposed to get sufficient credit if I don't, if I can't get credit, <laughs> you know? Um, <laughs> and that, that happened to me my first time out applying for a credit card and they were like, no. And I was like, why? <laughs> like, well, you don't have sufficient credit. How am I supposed to build that up? So a little, um, a little uh, kind of life hack about the credit game is your parents are supposed to build up their good credit and then add you to their credit so that you can kind of get a jump start in life with good credit. But when that doesn't happen, right? And I've, I've done that with, um, with my daughter once I learned that. Um, so she graduated high school with like a 780. And I was like, I mean, this is awesome. So um, so, but if you if you haven't had that experience, then um, there are ways to build your credit. Um, so people are maybe like afraid of credit cards, but credit cards are a really great way to get in the credit game and to build your credit. Um, so going back to like the game analogy I like to use with credit is um, if you were, I mean, we like football here in this area. So if you were a football coach and um, you know, you were like in the fourth quarter, fourth down, and you needed that game winning um, uh, moment um, or a game winning score. Um, and you've got a bench rider <laughs> who hasn't been in the game, hasn't played the game, hasn't shown themselves to be worthy of being that person. And they're like, coach, put me in. You're going to be like, no, you're too risky. I need someone who I know I'm not going to, it's not going to be high risk and that, that can make this, um, that can score, right? So, um, that's basically how creditors look at us um, in the credit game. If you haven't been playing the credit game or you've, you've been per performing not so well in the credit game, you're late on payments, um, you know, you have collections, you can't jump out there and say, hey, put me in the game, let me get a house. They're going to be like, no, you're too risky. You know, you don't play the game or you're not playing the game well. So, um, so credit is something that you want to use to leverage yourself in order to show creditors that you're credit worthy. Um, for example, if you had someone to come to you, someone you know personally in your life, and they wanted to borrow you know, $500 and you gave it to them, they paid you back, okay, great. And they come to you again and borrow money, they pay you back, you're gonna go, okay, you know what? You're, you're a low risk person. Like, you know, if, if my uncle Tim asked me for money, he always pays me back. So he's low risk, right? So that's how creditors um, look at us. Um, so your credit score can be the difference between the kind of, um, loan that you get and how creditors see you as either being high risk or low risk. Um, and it can be the difference between the kind of loan that you're able to secure. So in home buying, you can get a VA loan if you're military. And I don't know if Trayvon, you or Tiffany are um, military, but VA loan is an option there. Um, you can get a, an FHA loan, uh, which is like a government-backed loan or a conventional loan, which is basically the kind of loan you can get when you have excellent credit. Um, and so um, creditors see, um, see if you have a higher credit score as you being low risk and conventional or FHA loan can be the difference between the kind of home that you can get um, and how sellers look at you in terms of risk because they want to close. Um, they want to get to the closing table. So um if some 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 sellers are not even comfortable with working with an fha loan and that's not to scare you away from that but it really just um is to drive the point home that credit is so important in the home buying process the only time credit isn't really a factor if if either one of you can guess tiffany or trayvon when credit is not really important in the home buying process if one of you guys or both of you guys can answer in the chat the one instance where bam <laughs> Tiffany said cash. <laughs> um, there you go, Tiffany. The only time that you don't need to be, you know, need to worry about credit when it comes down to home buying is if you come in with that cash. You know, if that home is $300,000, 
um, and you've got $300,000 cash, who cares if you have a 380 credit score, right? You got money. Um, and that just happened actually in one of my transactions, we had someone offer $350,000 cash, right? Um, <laughs> so cash is still king. Um, so um, great job, Tiffany. So um, yeah, and it's pretty much just the um, the the importance of, of credit in in home buying is uh, so let's let's see let Tiffany just put something here in the chat. If it's three hundred, are you more likely to negotiate lower with cash? What do you mean by that? Come off um, mute and ask and and let me know what you mean by that. Uh, I was just using 300 as an example, 300,000. Are you more likely to negotiate the price if you have cash? Um, you know, it could give you more buying, because well, you have a lot of buying power when you have cash. Um, so sure, I would say uh, the short answer to that is yes, um, because like I said, cash is still king. It doesn't always win out um, because ultimately the seller, what they care about is what they're going to net. So um, if you had $300,000 cash, but they had an, uh, a buyer uh, competing with you who had a $380,000 loan, but you had cash, well, they know that you've got that money. So they, um, they could choose you because if, you know, it depends if they need to close quickly, you know, if they would really just rather have the cash and they don't want to have to worry about whether or not someone who's using a loan, it, their finance might fall through, which does happen. Um, so you might be able to say, well, you know, I have $300,000 $300, cash. Um, if, if, the, if the house is listed for three fifty, dollars but you have $300 cash, yeah, sure, you could win that. Um, but they, they might choose that higher amount that is financed. And that just happened in a transaction of mine where we had $350 cash offer, but we had a $380,000 um, financing and they took the three eighty. dollars So sometimes it wins, sometimes it doesn't. But it is, I mean, it's always cash is still king. It's always great to have cash. Um, did you have any other questions about that? was a good one. Any other questions about um, credit as it relates to, to your negotiating power or buying power? Maybe you'll no. come up with, okay, thanks. Maybe you'll come up with some as I move along. So I wanna share um, just a, a graphic really quick. Um, and this is, um, your FICO score and your Vantage score. And a lot of people don't know uh, the difference between these two. Can everybody see that, FICO and Vantage? Okay. Um, so the FICO score and Vantage score are basically, so if you um, are monitoring your credit and Tiffany and Trayvon, are you both monitoring your credit? Yes, no. Yes, I am. <laughs> okay. Um, and how, what are you using to monitor your credit? And, and Trayvon, he answered in the chat. Yes, he's monitoring his credit. That, that's, that's number one right there. That's, that's a great start right there. So I, I check my credit like I check Facebook. I'm obsessed with my credit. Um, so I do use Credit Karma. Um, I do use, and I'll, I'll drop a resource as well. Um, Experian.com is a great resource because Experian.com, when you sign up, it's free, um, but you can keep track of your FICO score there. They will give you your actual um, FICO 8 score. So that's a really great way to keep track of it. And so the, the main difference between my FICO and Vantage, people ask me all the time, um, like, what is the difference? So if, you, if you're using like Credit Karma or any type of credit monitoring like that, what they're giving you is your Vantage score. Um, and so that's not what creditors um, or mortgage lenders use to uh, approve you for credit. They're not using your Vantage score, they're using your FICO score. Um, why they do that? Really FICO and Vantage is two competing um, credit sources. So, um, you know, FICO is like Pepsi and Coke, and Coke, like which do you prefer? Well, in the mortgage world, they prefer to use FICO. And you will find sometimes that um, if you're following your Vantage score, like on a credit card or something like that, um, that's it's not representative of what your FICO score is. Sometimes it can be lower, sometimes it can be higher. And it really just depends on reporting. 
So that's why credit monitoring is uh, very important. You can also use, and um, I'll put these in the, okay. I see that. What's the difference between FICO and Vantage? Really, yeah. They're just two competing um, credit scoring um, like kind of services. Um, FICO or Vantage was started by, um, it's a conglomerate between uh, Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax, basically the big three. They are what make up your Vantage score. And it's just that combination of the reports from, you know, all of your creditors. And some of them, you'll, you'll see that they're varying. Um, so one of them might be like really high, TransUnion might be really high, might be, you know, 700 and, you know, Experian might be 640 and you're like, well, why is one so high and why is one so low? They, they, they will use up um, an average um, and, you know, you want them to use that high score, of course, but they'll take a, uh, an average of those. And so FICO basically is the um, kind of the more trusted um, score source uh, that mortgage lenders use. Um, so, and I'll scroll down on the graphic here and just show um, kind of how these are, are looked at in terms of, uh, you know, whether or not a ranking on your credit score. So on the FICO side, exceptional credit is a 800 to 850. On the Vantage side, ex excellent credit is a 781 to a 750. So there's um, some slight variation to what uh, is considered good or excellent credit or very poor credit on these two sources. Um, so, and I mean, there's, there's kind of a larger variation you can see, uh, not so much here, but if you look at here, you know, you got very good here and you can even see the way that they um, use them. They go from very poor here, fair to poor, good to fair, very good to good, that kind of thing. So that FICO is kind of a, um, kind of a, a stricter, a stricter, uh, like grading of, of credit. So you want to be at least here um, when it comes to um, being considered lower risk with um, home buying. But um, with most home buying programs, and I'll admit Ivy Wheeler into the, the chat or into the, the meeting, but with home buying, you want to be um, for FHA programs, you want to be at least a 640. And some programs will work with you if you're at a, a 620. But 640 is kind of where you want to be in terms of your FICO score. Um, anyone have any questions about that? FICO and Vantage and where you want to be in terms of home buying. It's kind of, um, it kind of gives you a, an advantage here because if you're, you don't want to be, you know, on the lower side of this, but I, like I said, 640 is like your minimum of where you want to be with home buying. So you know that if you're at least there, that you can have a, a, a discussion with a lender about, um, about home buying. Because if you're not um, at least there, then, you know, there's going to be, you know, you, that will affect you being qualified for a loan. Now, a lot of lenders and lenders that we work with and lenders that I work with personally, if you're not there, um, they will they will help you to get there. So some lenders, um, some lenders are going to say, "Hey, you're not qualified. You know, come back and talk to me when you are." But um, lenders, I I make it a point to work with lenders who will help you with credit. Um, so I do work with a lender called First Home Mortgage, um, and I would be happy to share that partner with you. Um, but they will work with you. They have a free uh, credit. Um, repair program to help you to get where you need to be in order to qualify if you're not at that 640 point. And I see something in the chat here. How can you get to 800? I've gotten to 750, but it went down to a loan. So it really, um, so it's really just about playing the game. So like, um, and the, and the, the more you play, the better chances that you have to get into an 800. So for example, um, sometimes you want to, like open, just open a, another credit card. So if you only have like one credit card, um, you might want to open another one. I've opened a credit card just to, just to play a little bit more um, because the, basically they want to see that you're responsible with a higher dollar amount, but it's a, it's a, it's a, the scale can, can be tipped. So even, so you said like your, your score dropped a little bit. I never worry if my score drops because I know that I can pick it right back up. 
So just getting to that 800, it just be, it might be a matter of you opening an, opening another account and just starting to pay on that, pay on time, you know, um, or it might be a, it might be a matter of closing an account, you know, kind of reducing your, um, your debt because it's, it's, they use debt to income. So how much debt are you in versus how much, you know, money do you make? So it's really, um, it's a, it's a balancing act really. Any other questions about that? Trayvon, do you have any questions? about credit, credit monitoring, kind of quiet. Um, I see that, um, okay, no, no questions. Um, I see that we have Ivy Wheeler. Ivy, do you have any questions so far about credit or anything that you've heard? Um, no, ma'am, um, I'll be uh, watching the recording. I'm sorry, I overslept, so. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Thank you for joining us anyway. She said, woke up. I got to get to this home buying workshop. Yes, yes. <laughs> All right. Please. Thank you for being here. Thank um, you. Yep, no problem. So I always say shop for a loan before you shop for a home. A lot of times in home buying, like we want to get to the meat and potatoes. We want to like jump on Zillow and start looking for a house, falling in love with stuff visually. And then like, you know, but we don't even know where we are in terms of credit. So um if you're credit monitoring, that's great. If you're not credit monitoring, I know that Tiffany and Trayvon are, Miss Ivy, if you're not credit monitoring, that's like one of the first things that you want to start doing is getting into a relationship with your own credit. Um, I, you know, I'm not, I like credit, I feel like Credit Karma or any other credit monitoring, Experian.com is a great resource to get your FICO score. Um, all these are free. Also, please use annualcreditreport.com. And I'll drop that in the chat. Has anyone not heard of annualcreditreport.com or not know that you can get a free credit, your full free credit report every year for free? Anyone, anyone? Definitely use that. You can get your free um, report every year. Um, and um, let's see, if there's no other questions about credit, I think that wraps it up for me. And I will give the floor to Steve so he can give the floor to Brenda. <laughs> thanks, everybody. <laughs> Trisha, thanks so much. That's a lot of good information you provided here on credit. But I do You're have welcome. a question for you because I know I think kind of sure. going off of what uh, Tiffany had mentioned, getting her score to 850 because she had a loan. Yeah. Um, based on that, do you feel that uh, having more of an open credit, like that revolving credit, may impact a little bit more versus a loan, just showing your buying power or your credit worthiness? Yeah, revolving credit is great. Like one of the best ways to build credit quickly is to get revolving credit. Retail credit cards are a really great way, like a Macy's or, or something like that, where you get to, you get to pay it um, every single month because it, it really starts to show you want that steady reporting. Um, and that's why it is, because with that, you want that steady reporting every single month that you know you want that green. So if you look at your report, you're gonna see um, they use like color coding. So green is good, you know, red is bad, yellow is you know kind of like a traffic stoplight, like you know, and yellow you kind of you know you're in a danger zone. So um, with that revolving credit and like retail credit, something that you can pay every month, it shows that you are you know you have a good relationship with your credit and you're paying on time. So that's why that's really good, and it's good to pay off a loan too. Um, you know, I actually paid off a car and my credit score went down. I was like, what is it? <laughs> you know, I thought like, you know, this was years ago. I paid it off and I thought my credit was going to go home, you know, and it went like, boom. And I was like, why did you do that? <laughs> so it's a really like fickle game credit is, but um, you really want to show, you know, just the consistency of paying on time. Um, and there's some little hacks that you can pay, like um, pay pay uh, um, 14 days in advance, um, you know, of your due date or something like that. Um, and that'll help you to pay less interest on, on, um, on the actual amount that you owe. Um, open a, um, a, um, an annual or a, um, a no APY for a year. Use the heck out of that, you know, so that you're like using that money for free because creditors want to make money on, on lending. That's the whole game, you know. So take advantage of that. So where you have that year of free um, usage, use the heck out of that car, pay it on time, pay it off, you know, 
after that, you know, if you don't want to use it, if you don't want to pay, start to pay interest on, on, um, on the money that you're borrowing. It's just, it's a game really. And so just, just play the game. Any other questions? Well, thank you so much. I see something in the chat. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Thank you so much. I think that's great to know. So as we're starting this process, you're getting information on what the realtor can do, how they represent you, but also it's an important fact to monitor your own credit. You know what that is prior to making those steps to getting the loan. Because uh, knowing your own information is very important and just knowing how that stands and how you stand yep. um, can move you very, very quickly and also get you in a better place to know what improvements you need to make or again, as you where you stand because it, it, the correlation between your credit score your credit worthiness, your payback versus your interest rate that you may obtain, they kind of go hand in hand. That's a really great point too, Steve. Like um, in just being high, high risk or low risk, you know, you kind of, there's a, there's a penalty for being high risk. You know, it means that you're going to pay more money and it's kind of, you know, you might be thinking of from that, from a, a, buy, a borrower standpoint, you're like, why would you charge me more money? Clearly, <laughs> I'm having an issue with that. But there, you know, there's a reward for being low risk and a penalty for being high risk. So if you are a low risk um, uh, borrower, you will save money because you get a lower interest rate. Being a high risk borrower, um, you know, they'll charge you more money for that. So um, there's some incentive to to being a low risk borrower. Very good. Very good. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, um, interesting, just kind of go back on one of the points that you made, how you said that cash is still king, uh, which is uh, a good point to kind of bring up because although we know that there's the lending aspect of purchasing a home, but there are still some cash components that do play a part in this as well. And one of the things that do come up are your acquisition or closing costs. Some things also just to kind of keep in mind as you're going about purchasing a home. Now with the acquisition and closing costs, as you know, closing costs, they all come at the settlement. As Blanca spoke about a little earlier, you go through your process, you find your realtor, you make your offer on the home once you find it. Uh, once you do that, then comes the next step before you get to settlement or also known as a lot of people like to refer to it as closing. And you do have some costs that come into play with that as well. Uh, one of the things that definitely come in with your closing costs, you like to try to estimate that. Your closing costs usually are around about 10% of the sales price. And what closing costs are, they are the total amount of funds that's needed to actually purchase this home at the end. And it's usually, again, we estimated about 10% of the sales price for closing costs. You also have something which you'll need cash as well for the down payment. Your down payment is normally between around three to about 5% of your home sale, of the home price itself. So if you're purchasing a home for about $200,000, you're really looking at down payment somewhere around that 3% of that to 5% of that. So you're looking somewhere between $6,000 to $10,000 of cash that you're hoping to have on hand for the down payment. Now also take that same $200,000 property, you're looking at about 10% of that, so about $20,000 in total, looking at the end for the closing costs. Now the closing costs encompass a lot of things. So we're gonna to touch on a few of them briefly. Um, some of your, which I'd like to refer to as out-of-pocket costs as well. You have your inspection, your home inspection, an appraisal and your earnest money deposit. Now home inspections, once you're under contract with your property, you've gone out and you had your great realtor, you've got that property, you put your offer in, it's been accepted. Now, one of the things to safeguard for yourself, you do that home inspection. That home inspection, they're going to come in and they're going to check that home from the roof down to the basement, uh, the electrical. They're going to go through the plumbing. They're going to go through your furnace, your AC. They're going to run every appliance. They're going to make sure that everything is good so that you know the home you're purchasing is a good quality for yourself. Also, the appraisal. Uh, that's something that your lender is going to ask for because as they're providing you a loan for this property, they want to make sure that the value of that home matches what you're looking for. And then your earnest money deposit. Your earnest money deposit, what that is, is a good faith amount of money that you're putting with your offer to show the seller 
that you are serious about purchasing this home. Now, this is different from your down payment. Your down payment actually correlates to the loan, but your earnest money deposit, it's about one to 2% maximum of your sales price of the home. And again, it's just to show the seller that I want this home, one, two, three Main Street, I love it. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put down on that $200,000 home, I'm going to put down about $2,000 to show you that I'm really serious about this. And that money actually sits in the escrow account. It doesn't go right to the seller right away. So don't worry about that. It's not like you're automatically giving them cash. That sits into an escrow account that's held by a title company until the actual closing or settlement takes place. Now, a few of the things that also round out that uh, closing costs are your recordation of transfer taxes. We need to have your, once it's all said and done, they're going to put that deed now in your name for your home on 123 Main Street. They're going to go ahead and record that in the public records. You're also going to have some fees that go along with that. Some of the lender's fees. You also have the commission from the agent. If the home that you're buying, or if it had maybe a condo, may have a homeowner's association fee or a condo association fee. We also have some title fees as well, because the title, they're going to go and they're going to pull all the records to make sure that that home is good and clean for you. They're going to make sure the person who's selling it actually owns it, make sure no liens or nothing attached to that property, and make sure it's all good and positive for you. So these are some of the costs that are associated with uh, some of the cash costs that may be out of pocket, some of the things you may have to have on hand or some of that may encompass. Um, but again, kind of going back, as Patricia mentioned, cash is king, but all of us may not have the ability to 100% purchase a home with all cash. I mean, if you do, that is great for you. <laughs> You've done a great job getting yourself ready and getting to that position. Uh, saving that funds over all over those years. But for a lot of us, we'll have to use a loan in order to do that. And what we do is that's where the down payment comes in at. But to talk a little bit more about the loan process, we're going to turn this over to Brenda, where she's going to actually talk to you about the loan, obtaining that, and also talk to you about some of the programs that also may be available to you as buyers within the Baltimore area. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn this over to Brenda so she can take this on a little bit more and go a little deeper for you. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome again. So now we are in this conversation of, okay, I've checked my credit. I have done, uh, connected with the real estate agent. I've connected with a lender. I have an idea as to how much they're going to give me. Steve mentioned how much roughly you need to have in terms of your, what we call closing cost or acquisition cost. And he mentioned that it was about 10%. I believe that's where we should be. Give me one second. Hold on. So he mentioned it's about 10% uh, total and he mentioned examples of fees that you need. So let's probably now simplify it. You want to buy a house that is 20, 200,000, 200, then you need what? 20,000 is a good ballpark. And that 20,000 is going to encompass the down payment, the home inspection and so on. So some of us, don't have the entire amount. So that's probably why you are here is because once you've been told, okay, Brenda, you need to have 20,000, I probably don't have all of it. So that's why I am here to probably share with you some places that you will be able to get some assistance with that money. It could come from your family and friends, what the lender will call as a gift. Now, when we talk about a gift from friends or family, it has to be traced. What does tracing mean? If Stephen is going to give me $5,000, he needs to write a letter saying that he's going to give me $5,000, and they need to see that Steve took the money from his bank account and put it in my bank account. So some of us don't have friends like Steve. So then the other option is you have your 401k, you have your retirement account, you're probably going to borrow from that. So if you have that with your employer, or if you've been putting that money aside, 
then with your employer, you might want to check what are the rules for you to be able to use that money. And there's usually a time frame that you have to use that money. So now let's assume that I don't have a friend like Steve. I don't have retirement account. I have saved, but not up to the 20,000. And for today, I'm just using the 20,000 as an example. If you were to borrow a house, I'm sorry, yes, purchase on a house that is at 200,000. Then the other source for you to get to come up with the total 20, let's assume you have 12 and now you need help with the eight, again, gift or your employer with your retirement or yourself, now who else can help you with that? Could be the government, federal programs, or it could be state of Maryland, or it could be where you want to purchase. So there are three different people or entities that can help you. However, four things need to apply. The four things would be, you're welcome, Tiffany. The four things would be you do need to qualify for a loan with a lender. Now, again, here we're talking to the person who's borrowing money from the bank. You do still need to qualify for the loan with the lender. All of them will require education and certification that you've completed the process. There's a lender that's going to play, that's going to be part of this chess game that will participate in some products. And then your lender might not participate in some of the products. Each lender is going to pick which product that they're going to participate in. Now here, somebody else is helping you with this money. It's not your friend, Steve. It's not your employer or your retirement account or your bank account with your savings. So when it's an entity helping you with this money, they are gonna somehow have some criteria and the biggest one is on top of education and on top of the lender you're going to use is household income. How much does the household have? And household income is everyone that lives in the house, the total income that's being produced. So it could be that Patricia and I and Blanca live in the same household, but Patricia is the one who's going to qualify for the loan, wonderful. They're still going to look at all three people that are going to live in the house. So in these products, it's the household income, not the individual who's going to be qualifying for the loan. Okay. Thank you. I was just catching up with the chat. So we mentioned that when you're borrowing money from the entity, there's some education that is needed. And that education can be done online or it can be done face to face, quote unquote, where some you're going to a location and some you're doing virtually like this. So when I say online, that's self-paced, you're just clicking buttons, next, 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 and then you're done. Or you have something like this where somebody's walking you through the process and they go through explaining what it is that you need. Then you meet with them, go through over your budget. Why? The lender is looking at your debt and your income. They don't care that you have a cell phone bill. They don't care that you have to pay your utilities. If you don't pay them, they foreclose. So the education from the housing counseling agencies, which for me, I'll share that all my buyers, I strongly suggest that they take the education, whether they use these products or not, because you're going to be talked to about your budget. When the water heater stops working, somebody needs to come up with the money to pay and replace that. And it's not going to be your bank. So the bank is not, when they're lending you money, they're not looking at all those other expenses. And that's what the education from the housing counseling agency goes through. They look at your budget and make sure that when you're going out there to buy a house, you're truly ready and you know what you're getting yourself into. So what are some of these products? I'll start with the national one. And again, the four things apply no matter which product we shall share. Whether it is from the government, federal, whether it's from the state or from the local entity, four things. You need to qualify for the loan. 
You need to pick a lender that talks to these pro products. That's why we have agents who are able to help you in navigating that process. You do need to take an education course and the first qualifier, probably I should say number one is what? Household income is going to be a qualifier to use this particular product. So the first one we can share is the Federal Home Loan Bank of Atlanta. This one starts off with 7,500. It's a grant, you don't have to pay it back. The additional 2,500 is for what I refer to as a community worker, your educators, your firefighters, your police officers, ETC, they would get that additional 2,500. Same four things apply. The lender would be participating in this. It depends on your household income. This is just a snap snapshot of an example for Baltimore City. You can see for yourself a two household income. You need to be between 41,600 for the year before taxes and then below 66,560. So that might qualify you, that might disqualify some of us. So right there, once you look at the household income, then you know whether you are able to participate in this product. Now again, your realtor and your lender is able to guide you on all of these particular products. Today, I possibly would not be able to go through all of them. And that's why you connect with a specialist who are able to help you with that. And that's your agent and your lender. If I talk about one that is applicable for the state, so FHLB doesn't matter where the property is because it's what? It's nationwide. Statewide, we have the Maryland Mortgage Program and that's a website you can visit. Maryland Mortgage Program, MMP, Maryland Mortgage Program, .gov. .gov means what? This is actually coming from our state government. It is a loan. You get a $5,000 loan. So I pause. Could Brenda get the FHLB grant, which is forgiven after I live in the house for maybe five years or seven, depending on the neighborhood, I'm sorry, depending on the state. So I could use the FHLB grant 5,000, and then I could stack on top the $5,000 loan. Loan means what? You will pay it back. You will pay it back. When you sell the house, when you refinance, when you finish off the loan, whether it's 30 year, 15 year, doesn't matter, state of Maryland will get their money back. It is sitting there with no interest. So the day you sell the house, $5,000 check is written to the state of Maryland. So the money never runs out. It still is income based. You still need to take an education. You still need to participate with a lender that works with this particular product. So let's give an example of income. This is where probably a lot more people would be able to use this particular product. Buyer Stionis um, gave you the four. If you buy, if you consider buying in another area, then the incomes are going to be different with the other jurisdictions. So Baltimore City under 127, 200 for less than two people in the house. For more than three people, you're seeing it's 148, 400. So a very healthy income that majority of our clients would qualify for. So if you checked that, yes, you are within this income bracket, then the other stuff apply. The lender that you pick, you still need to take education as well prior to you getting the keys to the house. Now let's bring into the two areas that we said that we're going to focus on. We have Baltimore City. Baltimore City has a lot of products. You have, if you work for Baltimore City government, they have an employee product for 5,000. If you're going to buy in a certain neighborhood, Baybrook, they have another product as well. So Baltimore City has a lot of products. Here, we're just introducing you to some. We're not going into details. This is where, again, your partner will be key in the process to get to what your goals are. We have the Community Development Grant. That one is property specific because the property has to qualify in terms of the condition of the property. 
We have another one, Direct Homeowners Assistance Program as well, 5,000. You notice in the theme of most of them is 5,000. Howard Park um, by Go Northwest. This one is Southern Neighborhoods as well, and they have a map of which area in Baltimore City you're able to use this particular product. You could get 10,000. Your employer could also be participating in Live Near Your Work. So I've helped people who work for John Hopkins, Under Armour, the list is very long. So the first thing that I ask the buyer when I connect with the buyer is, okay, check with the employer, what products do they have? And you'll be surprised, we have builders there. So it's not only big companies like Under Armour or Johns Hopkins um, Hospital, other employers do participate and it ranges from 2000 to 500 where some of the money comes from your employer and then the difference comes from Baltimore City and I'm sure there are rules with your employer what you need to do in order to qualify for that. And then the one that is probably my favorite is the Baltimore Trolley Tours. How this one works, you literally get into a bus and you're driven around neighborhoods in Baltimore City. You don't have to buy in that neighborhood that they took you to. This is a Baltimore City product. And then after you complete that particular process, again, with the four still in mind, you still need to qualify for the loan. You still need to take an education course and get a certificate. You still need to qualify in terms of income. And then we have, what's the third one? Oh, it slipped my mind. Okay, so we have income. We have, um, you need to take the class. You do need to, oh, the lender. Yes, the lender still does matter on all of these products. So it's a 5,000 forgivable loan, forgivable close very enough to a grant, you do need to live in the house for five years. So they usually offer them three times a year. We just missed the one that happened in September. The next one is going to be in January. So again, since our title is you're going to be buying within the next four to six months, then some of you now are planting the seed that in January, you will connect with your agent and be able to attend this particular session. There is a catch to this one. You almost need to already have started looking at houses. You need to have picked the one in Baltimore City because you do need to submit all your paperwork within 10 days of this particular event. So they usually have 35 spots. All you have to do to qualify to be one of those 35 is to attend the event. You obviously need to have talked to a lender to qualify for a loan. You do need to have picked the lender that's going to be participating in this particular product and then be able to submit your contract. Once it's accepted by the seller within that 10 day time frame, you are good to go. Now, all that I've mentioned are stackable, but stacking up stuff means they need to fit well. And sometimes you might have a lender who only communicates with three products. Another one only communicates with two. That's what your real estate agent is able to do. We said we're going to talk about Baltimore City and Baltimore County. So Baltimore County has two products. There's one where you get 10,000. It's referenced to a settlement express loan program. You get up to 10,000 and it's forgiven after you live there for five years. Specific lenders, you still need to take your education. You still need to qualify for the loan. And then the last one in Baltimore County is in Dundalk area, the county side, especially for that zip code 21224. Dundalk uh, area 21222 and 21224, they also have a product for 5,000 and it's a five-year forgivable grant. So in all of this, the message is these help out there. You just need to know what you know what you need to know to get started so what's next for you hopefully in summarizing what we have accomplished today for you is check your credit 
Because again, even you to get assistance in buying the house, you do need to qualify for the loan. So Patricia talked about working on your credit. So the first step, if assignments are being assigned today, is definitely check your credit. And then you do need to reduce your debt. Now it's a catch 22, like Patricia mentioned, in terms of it being a game, reduce your debt as much as you can. Patricia mentioned paying off your credit card when you use it as often as you can, reduce your debt. And then the other part to all of this is save as much as possible because sometimes depending on your household income, you're thinking you're not making that much money, but they're thinking you are. So save as much as you can. Yes, there's opportunity for you to stack this up. However, you do still need to have your own money that you need to spend in this particular process. Definitely connect with your agent who's going to be able to get you started in this process. Feedback questions. Okay, I think we have Trayvon. So um, the other two had to leave. So Trayvon, we have some great news for you <laughs> in terms <laughs> of we have the event that's coming up on November the 20th. And we are also going to be sharing some do's and don'ts from the lender perspective right now, since you've planted the seed that you want to purchase sometime soon, we do have some information for you to have that's going to talk to you about some do's and don'ts before you even start talking to the lender. Hopefully you have some direction in terms of what you need to do, check your credit. Once you check your credit, start reducing your debt connect with the lender and definitely connect with the agent that brought you here, me. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> so Steve, anything else you wanna add on? I think that is it, Brenda, thank you so much. Um, Trayvon, thanks for staying with us and going through it all and much appreciated. Just wanna give you some quick information. I know you have uh, Brenda's contact information, but just wanted to share with you um, also, uh, other amazing speakers as well, Patricia and Blanca, and also my information as well, in case there's anything that any of us can do to assist you, please feel free. And as Brenda mentioned, um, the next session is going to be, so please save the date, November 20th, uh, 10 a.m. to 11. Um, the link right there where you'll find the event, upcoming event. And again, thank you so much. Please tell a friend, anyone else you may know who's interested or is in this process to begin buying a home. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And again, Trayvon, if you have any, any questions, please feel free. If not, I wanna wish you a great, great, great day afternoon. Okay, thank you. Trayvon, don't forget to take the test.